Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how I created this pan pastel background on my lima here. This was a little bit of a risk because I used Fabriano paper which isn't a pastel paper and I just want to share with you the experience of applying the pastel to this particular paper and the kind of process and everything behind it. So let's jump straight in. So the first thing that I wanted to do was test out the pan pastel with um, using an embossing, an embossing tool underneath. With pencil it's really easy to add over the top of embossed lines, it doesn't tend to go in or anything, but with pastel because it's like so, so, so much like a powder, I wasn't sure whether or not that would get into the grooves of the embossing tool and the lines didn't actually come out all that great which I was kind of disappointed by. I was adding in the background first and then I was adding the lima over the top and I wanted like all of these like wispy white hairs to come over the top so the embossing tool wasn't going to be for me so then I decided to try out my white pencil. I used the Holbein soft white pencil to go over the top and as you can see from my little test there the lines came out absolutely perfect, like I was so so pleased with how that came out. I also wanted just to test out how the pan pastel would apply using some sponge, uh, the sponges that come with like this little tester pack that I got from Jackson's Art Supply. I'm going to leave a link for that in the description below if you want to test out pan pastels yourself because they're quite expensive but you can get like a little pack of two and a load of the tools and everything so you can try them out, that was what I did and uh, really really fun. Um, but yeah I just wanted to test out how uh, the sponges would apply to the Fabriano paper before I actually like went into the piece uh, just to make sure that I wanted to use pan pastel as a background. I also then tested out the white pencil over this as well. Uh, the first tester that I did was using like the little soft like little kind of it looks like a trowel <laughs> But it's got like the sponge on the end. That's the tool that I used first. Then I just wanted to make sure that the white pencil would work over the sponged area as well, which it did. As you can see, it came out really nice. So then I decided to go into applying the pan pastels to my paper. Usually when you use pastels or anything, you use a particular pastel paper. I've used pastel mat in the past, which is like um, sandpaper and it really grips onto the pastel. And it doesn't fly off or anything. But with Fabriano, if any of you have worked with it or are familiar with it, it's very smooth. It's a hot press paper and I use it for coloured pencil because it's so smooth and doesn't give like that graininess, that really harsh kind of bobbly texture to the drawings. So I wasn't sure exactly how the pan pastel would stick to this Fabriano pa uh, paper. Um, I did do a couple of testers beforehand just to kind of make sure that the pastel would stick and that I could get a couple layers down, I could do a little bit of blending. Um, but yeah, I applied my lighter colours first. I'm not sure of the colour names but I really liked this like light blue. It was really really nice. I used that for the lighter areas. Like I kind of went for like a bokey, I don't know if that's how you say the word, but I kind of went for that effect on this particular piece, uh, just kind of given like the subtle hint of leaves. So I used the light blue to kind of suggest there were like little light patches coming through the leaves. Then I used this lighter green to add in, um, you can see at the top there I've got like, looks like a chicken foot. Um, I've got like three little stalks of a leaf there and then I'm just kind of adding this uh, lighter green around the light blue areas as well and I'm trying my best to blend them in. It is quite difficult I found to blend pan pastels on this particular paper mainly because the paper didn't want to kind of really grab the colour that I was putting down. Uh, I found it best to kind of use um, like put down your pastel uh, onto your paper with the sponge where you actually want a, a good saturation of colour and then use a sponge when it's kind of wearing off of the pastel to kind of do the blending. I found that the easiest way to um, apply everything. Um, but you can see as I'm putting the pastel down it does kind of look a little patchy on the first layer but with this Fabriano paper I was actually quite pleased that you could get a couple of layers of pastel down and then actually grab it so that was really good so uh, yeah I was really pleased with that. Um, then I went into using like this kind of viridian kind of green colour um, which was a darker than the, the lighter green and it was a bit more of a cooler toned as well and then I went into using an even darker green and then you'll see as well that I used that really kind of dark um, kind of like a, a yellow toned green uh, towards the end to get the really dark shadows in but I apply the first layer you can see as I said it's really kind of patchy but then I start adding in a second layer and I'm using the soft tool that kind of trowel <laughs> looking thing to add this down here 
um, and this worked a little bit better. I kind of used like a patting technique with the sponge. I kind of used a patting technique, but then I would also kind of uh, put some pressure on the sponge and kind of drag it along the paper to try and get some color off of there. Uh, but with this soft tool, I just used it in like a patting motion. Every now and then I kind of use it back and forth to do some blending, um, put some like harsher lines of color down, like where I've got that leaf area. I just wanted to kind of convey that that was like the three lines of the leaf so you could kind of gather some kind of shape so I kind of used the pastel tool in like a back and forth motion like I would with shading with a coloured pencil but a majority of the time I just used this patting method uh, when it came to blending everything I used a variety of different <laughs> methods with this tool I think I go back in and use the larger sponge as well at some point um, I can't remember if I did that uh, but I kind of, as I was working, because I hadn't really worked with Pan Pastel before to do like a background of, of this, I hadn't done any kind of background like this before, this was my first attempt at using Pan Pastels and doing a kind of blurred background, I found that I was putting down my darker colours and then to blend them I had to go in with some of the lighter tones as well and go back over the top and that worked really well. So. I, when I first approached this I kind of put down my lighter colours and then slowly got darker like a little coloured pencil but with pastel you can actually add the lighter colours back over the darker colours so that's what I ended up doing towards the end you see I'm putting down this really dark green here uh, I really like this colour actually and um, it looks kind of harsh at the moment but I think it adds to the contrast of the background and really gives it something so I was quite pleased I went with that particular dark colour so I'm just kind of adding that down and then going back in with some of the lighter colours and going back over the top to help to blend it into the even lighter colours surrounding it. And just all the while just kind of using that patting technique and uh, just making sure that I can get as much pastel down on the paper as possible. And it was, as I say, it was quite difficult to get a lot of layers down. I, did, I went into this knowing that this wasn't pastel paper so it wasn't going to hold a lot of layers. Um, so I went in with that kind of mindset. I was kind of built up probably about three or four layers that this paper this paper took, which was fairly reasonable, to be fair, it, it not being a pastel paper and being a watercolour paper. If you want to do this particular kind of background with like pastel mat or a specific pastel paper, you'd obviously get a lot more layers and a lot more of a smoother look. But I was quite happy with the overall look of this background uh, towards the end because it does look kind of patchy but I think that adds to the look that the kind of lima would be in like you'd get a lot of this mottled light effect where the light was coming through the leaves and everything so I think I don't know if I'm just making excuses here or what but I do think that the um, effect of layering the pastel in this manner and the paper not being able to take too many layers I think it does kind of add to the effect for this particular piece I'm not sure how it would work um, if I was doing like like a blue background for instance like or a purple background like a bit more of an unnatural but that kind of still like bokey effect I'm not sure how it would look for that um, I'm gonna have to do a little few samples and see uh, I did use my finger to do a little bit of blending I hate getting my fingers dirty when using pastels but I did go in and use my finger to do some blending it worked a treat I can understand why people go in and they're using their hands and everything to to help manipulate the mediums it was something that I I had to do so I took the took the bit the bullet and did it there but I was really happy with the outcome of this and I was, as I said, really surprised at how many layers this particular paper could take. My technique and application of the pan pastels probably wasn't the best. I don't know if any of you guys have ever used pan pastels uh, or are like really familiar with them. Um, my technique probably isn't great and I apologise for that. But as I said, this is my first time working with them. I wanted to share the experience with you guys and kind of give you my tips that I use to create this particular piece. If you wanted to create something similar, then my tips are there for you uh, to go and create that. As I said, just using that like patting technique. I started off going from light to dark with the pan pastels, but you don't really need to do that because you can use the lighter pastels over darker pastels. Um, but yeah, I really hope that this video has given, given you some kind of insight into potentially using pan pastels for a background. It works incredibly well. I was really pleased with the overall outcome of the piece which you saw at the beginning and now that you're kind of seeing at the end as well it worked really well you can add colored pencil back over the top as well I used some pan pastel 
as like the base layer in my lima as well that video will be out next week where i explain the process of drawing that and using pan pastels in that as well um, so you can add colored pencils back over the top so i might even go ahead and do a piece where i'm using pan pastels completely as a base and then going in with with pencils over the top and adding details so let me know in the comments if that is something that you would be interested in but other than that I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you can take something away from my experience of adding pan pastels onto a non-pastel paper and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye!